Hello everyone, Luke here and welcome back to the channel. So, by popular request, I've decided to do a teardown video of the magnetic hot stirrer plate because I was going to do a follow up video anyway. So the first things that I want to go through are the components in this machine. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain a little bit about them. I don't really know a whole bunch about it, um, but I have enough vague knowledge about these components that I'll be able to talk to you about it. So there's four main components in this machine. And these consist of the heat plate, uh, the controllers, and the motor, which is just under here. So I want to give you a look at the heat plate. Oh, I have to turn it around because the wires are this side. Yeah, so I'm going to turn that around. And this is what the heat plate looks like. Um, pretty sure the thermal couple is just falling out. Whoops. But the thermal couple just sits under there, and what that what that does is uh, it can register the temperature of the of the heat plate and display on the controller here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a picture of the heat plate up on screen now. Oh, nah. <laughs> um, which is going to be pretty cool. So yeah, that's basically what the heat plate looks like. And all this is made out of is a piece of copper tape, well, two pieces of copper tape, uh, and a little bit of our ink. Bear in mind that this can heat up to 120 degrees pretty quickly, pretty quickly. Um, because it's a resistive heater, and they have something like 99% efficiency of converting electricity to heat, which is pretty cool. So secondly what I want to show you is the motor on the inside. So what I'm probably going to have to do is now I've removed this plate here, I'm just going to try and get this out real quick. So it's not in the way, oh but I've got this tape to the side, I forgot about that. Get this out of the way so we can have a bit of a closer look to see what's going on here. So, you're going to notice the... I'm going to go through that, that in a second, actually. So yeah, I could probably give you a better view of that heat plate now. There we go. Okay, so secondly, here's the motor. And you're going to notice this little pinkish sort of disc uh, that is actually attached to this motor. And what that's made out of is epoxy resin. And all I did was, I did a circle in a little bit of cardboard and I used a little bit of butyl rubber at the bottom so it didn't spill out. And I just held the motor in place. It didn't have to be a perfect circle, uh, but it had, to be, it had to resemble a circle pretty closely. So once that's set and dried, all I did was plug it in, set it to 14 volts. I know it wasn't very high, but I didn't want to accidentally chip the, uh, the epoxy resin. And I just held a piece of sandpaper there, just going like this sort of thing, to try and get this edge really smooth and try and get this to a true as possible circle as I could. And then I just glued some magnets on here. So I've got two magnets from a hard drive, and then we have these other two really strong magnets lying about. So um, these are both op opposite poles, and they're pretty strong, and the extra weight helps it spin, which is pretty cool. Um, so now there's only two more components that we want to go through. So I'm going to have to turn this around so you can see. You probably saw it in the last video, but I'm going to go into a little bit more detail with these. So let's feel... Alright. So the first one I'm going to go through is the heat controller. So you're probably going to notice that I talked about the thermal couple. And that is what's attached to the uh, microcomputer heat, co heat temperature controller. Sorry. And what that does is detect the temperature... Uh, so it can heat it up to a specific temperature that you set. And what that will do is then keep it at that temperature, which is, you know, that's pretty cool. And finally, we have the PWM slash RPM controller. And that pretty much speaks for itself. So what that does is it literally controls the speed of the motor. I can turn it up to 100 RPM and I can just let that spin really fast. And then we've got a little off button here which turns off the, the, the machine. And that's basically all the components. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put pictures of all the components right now. Boom, 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 boom. So you guys can have a bit of a closer view of that. Okay, so I'm going to move the camera a little bit closer so I can show you how cool this bottom bit is. 
um, because I made it out of acrylic, uh, see-through acrylic, so I could see all the wiring on the inside. And I thought that was a little cool addition to make it a little bit, little bit more unique. Um, and also it just makes it look awesome. So, I'll see you in two seconds. So this is the cool bit that, uh, the cool bit that I was talking about. Also, this motor looks really nice on camera. <laughs> so let me lift this up and look at that. I know it doesn't look like much wiring, it looks a bit messy, but it's awesome because it's completely see-through and I really, really, really like the uniqueness of all of it. Um, and yeah, so here you can see that I've grouped all of the negatives all onto one side here. Uh, you probably see that with the black tape. And then I've grouped all of the positives and I put them through this little hole on the back. Uh, just in case I want to wire it up to a plug or something like that in the future. But at the moment I'm just using a lab bench power supply. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Well, I really like the build of this machine. I, I think that it's doing the job absolutely perfectly and I really, really, really do like the way that it looks. Uh, bear in mind that this is only really using two types of material to build this whole machine up. So what I've used, you've got to notice these boxes, I've probably said it once, um, they're acrylic. So I just literally cut them down to size, I uh, glued them together using some glue that is heat resistant all the way up to 130 degrees. So I know that I'm going to be okay if I decide to heat this up a bit to 120. Um, it's the same with this bottom piece here, it's uh, also glued with the same glue, just in case. Uh, this here on the motor, the base of the motor, is made out of an aluminium sheet. And what I did is I just cut that down to size, drilled two holes in it, and I bolted the motor down. So then it goes acrylic, aluminium, acrylic, which I painted this bit black, otherwise it would just look a bit too see-through for my liking. I wanted to have a little bit of colour differential between the uh, throughout the entire machine. So, acrylic, aluminium, acrylic, oh, that was a bit hard, <laughs> it's fine though, uh, acrylic, and then aluminium again, which is what the actual heat, pa uh, heat plate is directly painted onto. So, that is pretty cool. So what I'm going to do is just stack this up again, so you can sort of see how it gets built up. There we go, I had a little bit of trouble, uh, but I, I, I figured it out in the end. So, like I said, uh, it's, the, uh, it's the acrylic, the aluminium sheet, which I think is the wrong way around, but that's okay. Then it goes acrylic again, then the heat plate. And that's the finished machine. Well, I hope that was interesting to you guys, and um, I don't think I've really missed anything. Uh, but if I have, I will be doing a full build guide on this in the next coming week or so. Um, and it's going to be part of a series of homemade lab equipment, which also was quite popular with my last video on this, that people kind of want to see that. So I'm going to go ahead with that, which is going to be pretty cool. But anyway guys, I hope you have a brilliant day, and I will see you later.